Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. And, and uh, we're, we're going to get into the word today. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things. I have a few things in my spirit I want to talk about today. Um, somebody say counterfeit. Uh-oh. It just hit me. Somebody look at your neighbor with some wide eyes and say counterfeit. Counterfeit. Somebody watching online, Elijah, show us them online real quick. Somebody put in the comments today, counterfeit, real quick, just for a few minutes. Counterfeit, counterfeit, counterfeit. Somebody say, and counterfeit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we also, I want to talk about, if we have time, I want to talk about, uh, somebody say stories. 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 Hallelujah. Let's go into the real quick in Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, and we're going to pray for some people. And somebody's watching online, share this. It's going to bless somebody. I mean, we're in a season of counterfeit. You want to be discerning. You want to be discerning. And the Lord began to show me counterfeit in the scriptures. And y'all have heard me teach about the spirit, the, the counterfeit spirit or counterfeit. You can't learn counterfeit by just reading about it. You have to experience it. Some of us, we went to counterfeit school. Yes, we did. And you had to learn about it. Discern, learn how to discern it. Amen. And you went through some things. You, you dealt with some people and you said you came out of that saying never again, never again, never again. Yeah. Now, when you you meet people that have an experience that the, all the red flags that you want, you're like, listen, run. But they don't get it. They'll walk right into it. It's what America's in right now. Walk right into it. We ain't got it yet. Amen. And listen, I don't got nothing against Obama. I don't got nothing against uh, Biden. I don't have anything against Kamala. It's the, it's the spirit. It's the spirit that's involved. Huh? The counterfeit always comes before the authentic. Amen. And until you learn the lesson, America will keep going through the cycle of counterfeit. Amen. It will keep making the wrong choice. Amen. Uh, we'll keep going around and around again. And my prayer is don't make America wait again. Don't make America wait again. Come on. God is the only thing that can make America great. God is the only thing that can make America great. But the intercessors, the prophets, your prayer, your voice determine whether or not we're going to wait again. Because there is something that God wants to do that's greater than the politics that we're fussing and arguing about even though yes politics are involved and i post on facebook i said do we even know that it's god's politics that we're to be involved with do you know what god's politics are god's politics is the harvest his politics are souls that's his politics amen so he's trying to create an avenue. He's trying to open a door for harvest of this time that's been delayed already. It's already been delayed. So everywhere there's a counterfeit, there is an authentic. Some of you dated the counterfeit. Some of us married the counterfeit. Hey. Listen. Y 
Yeah. Married the counterfeit. Yeah. Some of us created problems where there didn't need to be a, a, a problem. Right? And look at God's grace. Look at his grace. Some of us married the counterfeit. Some of us multiplied the counterfeit. And had Ishmael's. Oh, come on now. I don't want to hurt nobody. We had Ishmael's. Right now. Right now. Israel is fighting Ishmael. Right now. Isaac is still contending. Do you see that? Right now. But look at God's grace. Look at God's grace, even for Ishmael. Even now, uh, 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 uh. Dante, I need you to check the phone. What's that sound is coming from that phone? Uh, right now, there's a, this is what's taking place in it. In, uh, be careful. Yeah, don't, you, you can. You all right? Take your time. <laughs> Ain't no rush. Don't knock that camera on me. <laughs> now. <laughs> so, there's counterfeit always comes before the authentic. Okay? You, you have to learn that. You know, uh, uh, you, go th you go through that. Amen? And sometimes experiencing uh, 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 the counterfeit season is a manifestation of deliverance for your house. Amen? It means that uh, it means that something has to come through you and out of the blood. Is somebody hearing me? Something is ready to manifest through your life and out of the blood. Amen. This isn't everybody's story, but I told you because I asked the Lord, I said, God, I'm a prophet. You made me a prophet. Why didn't you just tell me this ain't the one? When in fact, he even did. He did, and he warned me. I wrote God a letter in my car at the park, hand wrote him a letter. I liked the girl. I said, God, I know she's not the one, but allow me to have this time with her. Yes, I did. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Right now, we got some Americans writing God a letter. God said it's going to cost you something. And if you keep, uh, 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 if you keep making that, it's going to cost you something that you can't recover. Oh, yeah, I lost some things. I lost something. Listen, I'm going there and deal with the kids myself right now. I'm about to go tell them to straighten up, whatever that noise is. They don't want to see me. I used to work for the YMC. I used to deal with the little ones. <laughs> All of that got to stop. I had a whistle. And they <laughs> I used to have a name. I said, do y'all want, want Mr. Michael or Sergeant Michael? Because Sergeant Michael come out real quick. And parents came in. How did you get them so quiet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now um, you know, it's, it, 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 I wrote God a letter. And I began to see how 
important it is for us to uh, see and to be able to discern. Because you'll avoid some things. You'll avoid some things uh, 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 that, that you... Praise the Lord. And listen, if we need to bring some of them in here and pray, lay hands on them. We will. Yes, we will. Do we need to pray for some of them? Okay. If, let me know because we can bring them in here. Lay hands on them. Right in front. Bring them right in front of everybody. In Jesus' name. <laughs> we in God's living room. <laughs> if we need to. If if we, we'll we'll give them a few few more, give them a, another chance, give them a few more chances. Not right now, not right now. Now, so uh, 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 it, when you can see in the spirit, when you can discern, some things don't have to come out like that. When you become someone that can deal with roots, you can deal with roots. You can get it at the root. Amen? That is the prophetic uh, uh, grace. And then there's some things that no matter what you do, it has to come forth. It's coming through you, manif and it coming out of the blood. Amen? There's some things that God will allow you to go through so someone else does not have to go through it. Amen. That's why those of us that carry that spirit of discernment and we can say, that's counterfeit. Don't do that. <laughs> it helps to listen to the wisdom. Amen. But, but most of us, we hard-headed. We, we have to learn for ourselves. We got to go through it ourselves. We got to experience it ourselves. Amen? My parents sat me down, showed me the bills. They showed me the credit, and they said, all right, son, before you jump into the world, there's a few things you need to know. Don't do this, don't do this, and don't do that. I didn't listen. Got myself in a deep, deep hole. I didn't listen to the wisdom. Amen. And listen, that's one of the plights of the prophetic. Us prophets, we're experiential. <laughs> we don't learn through just reading. And sometimes we don't even learn through just hearing. We have to experience it. And that's prophetic. That's prophetic. Because you live in a dimension where you're not hearing or learning God. You're experiencing him. So unless you don't experience it, it's not real to you. But once you experience it, it leaves a mark on you. So once you experience that counterfeit, it marks you. So God is allowed a counterfeit to come through, and it's marked you. You can taste it, smell it a mile away. That's counterfeit. That's not the real deal. That's not it. Amen. As much as you want to make it it, as much as you want to write God a letter and allow it to be it for now, it's not going to change. It's not going to make it it. Amen. And then I went and married the counterfeit. <laughs> and God warned me. And he said, nevertheless, I'm going to take this as an occasion to work this out for your good. Amen. Amen. And then I got divorced. And I said, Lord, well, how are you going to allow me to go through this? Why are you letting me do that? <laughs> and the Lord said, no, you don't understand. It's prophetic. I'm, uh, I'm allowing you to be broken from that spirit. Meaning, from here, you will be one that walks in the authentic. Let me help you. See, see, see. Somebody didn't know 
that in order for you to walk in the authentic, you had to come through a counterfeit. You will be one that moves in the authentic move of the spirit. You will be one that walks in the authentic spirit, not that counterfeit. God said, from this day, I'm breaking you off from counterfeit. I'm breaking you off from fake. I'm breaking you off from pseudo. And I'm bringing you into authentic. Amen. I'm breaking you off from uh, 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 not enough. I'm breaking you off from not it. Somebody say that's not it. Uh, 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 I'm let me help you. I'm breaking you off from settling. <sighs> the Lord said, from now on, your spirit will no longer desire to settle. But I'm going to give you a taste of the authentic. And how many know when you taste that filet? <laughs> you go to Applebee's, it's hard to eat a... What do you want Come on. Amen. What's the other state? Of, it's, it's hard. To, when you're eating the filet, it's hard to go back to the sirloin. Come on. It just don't taste the same. God says, I'm ruining your taste. I'm ru ruining your taste. From this day, you will desire the best. From this day. You will desire my best. You will desire the best. You will desire the authentic. You will no longer have a taste for anything less than my best. Come on, somebody. You will no longer settle for less. Come on, somebody, somebody let shift. Somebody spirit shift. Shift into the authentic. Shift into God's best. Shift into his greatest. Come on, America, shift. You miss every counterfeit place and you land right into the authentic that God has ordained. Some of y'all then break out right now as you don't know it because God is graduating you out of counterfeit school. You listening to Breakout ch Church right now. Breakout, listen to Breakout right now. God is graduating you out of counterfeit school. He's bringing you into the authentic. He's bringing you into the authentic move of his spirit. He's bringing you into the authentic dimensions of your life. Uh-oh, somebody want to go there. The authentic dimensions of your life. Somebody say counterfeit. Now, let's go into this scripture real quick. I want you to see something because on Wednesday, we taught a very powerful lesson. If you go back and watch it, I know when the, I know when the message is just so full of the spirit, it's so powerful because I'm nervous. Even while as I'm teaching it, I'm nervous. That's my soul. That's my soul that's sitting on the edge of the revelation. You ever go to the edge of a mountain? And you just look, it's a beautiful sight, but you're looking over, but you're nervous to stand so close to the edge. Do you know that when you feel that nervousness, did you know that's where you're right on the edge of the deepest places of the spirit? Did you know? So I know we're in deep, when I start, my soul started to feel, feel nervous. We, we're teaching in nervous places. It means we get, we're right on the edge of deep. Amen. Uh, go back and watch Wednesday when you guys get a chance. We taught about personality, and the Lord took it in such a powerful direction. He began to teach us about uh, the genetic code and how he builds a man. Or better, better way to say it is how he builds a body. How God builds a body. And how... All through the Old Testament, he was building the body of Jesus from one generation to another. And in each generation, he looks for faith because your genes are made up of, are, are made up of what was able to come through your blood 
from one generation to another. Let me help you. So there are spirits trying to make an impression on someone. There are spirits trying to make an impression on someone here. Even while it's the Lord wants to make an impression here. Do you see that? Now, I want you to see how God operated. Because whenever spirits got a hold of a man or a woman in a generation, that spirit made an impression and that spirit is looking for a level of impact that will actually imprint upon the genetic code. Even while as God is trying to do the same thing. So God is actually limited and he's reserved to use that bloodline. When that bloodline has failed and when, it, when that bloodline has uh, 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 compromised, now the genes have to recycle through another generation or several generations until God can find somebody with faith. And when he finds somebody with faith, he begins to move to mark their blood. Because you have two bloodlines in you. You have the spiritual bloodline and you have an earthly, natural blood. Do you see that? Now, when Jesus came, he introduced a, 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 a genetic alteration. <laughs> when Jesus came, he introduced the ability for the genes to be altered from a spiritual dimension. Is somebody hearing me? Where the curse can be reversed. D do you see that? So all through the Old Testament, marks were being made on the blood from one generation to another. But God reserved specific ones to make his mark upon to build the body of Jesus. Do you see that? So I want you to understand that where uh, a spirit in influencing someone, they're trying to get a hold of the blood. Okay? They're trying to make a mark. Oh, I don't know if y'all ready for me. So now we have a time where the uh, where where you can have someone that is born homosexual. Somebody's not ready for me. <laughs> born homosexual, meaning they're physically different, physically coming out the womb. They're different physically, physically, because of the effect through the bloodline over generation after generation after generation after generation. I asked the Lord. I asked him. Somebody mute my TV. I think my TV is on in there, y'all. Uh. I asked the Lord when I saw the uh, science come out about the genetics between the heterosexual and the homosexual because I didn't believe it was true. I thought it was just. But when I asked the Lord, he said, yes, it's true. That is the result of generations of oppression of a spirit. And that's why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will quicken your mortal body. Amen. But another spirit will also eventually affect the physical as well. Do you see that? So God bless you. God is 
uh, 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 wanting to get a hold of your blood. He's wanting to make an impression upon you. And when he is able, when God was able to get a hold of the blood, he took that man or that woman and they became a seed. Amen. They became a seed. And when he was building the body of Jesus, everyone that was a seed for Jesus had to carry a certain characteristic in their blood. They had to carry the characteristic of sacrifice, willing sacrifice. That's why when uh, Adam messed up, God looked and he saw a characteristic inside of Abel. <laughs> I tell this all the time. Most of us think uh, Abel was killed, but I'm here to burst your bubble. He was not killed. He was not killed like you think. Yes, his brother murdered him in the field, but in the spirit, Abel was willing to die. Somebody said, Prophet, how you know he was willing to die? Because you don't understand that dimension of sacrifice. When Abel and Cain came to God, Cain brought vegetables. <laughs> Let me help you. See, you don't know. See, you give outside of yourself. But what you don't know is your sacrifice is actually you. Your sacrifice is actually what you are willing to give of yourself. But see, you give outside of yourself. You say this, you know, I'm, I'm only going to give this much money. But you don't know you're only giving this much of yourself. So when Cain, when Abel came to God with a, a pleasing sacrifice, the first of the flock, God said, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. He, he understands something. He understands something must die. And his sacrifice in the realm of the spirit said, I am willing to give myself. So God found this characteristic all through the generations. Why? Because by the time Jesus came, he entered into a body that carried the genetics that said, I'm willing. That said, I'm a willing sacrifice. Amen. When uh, God was looking for a man to represent the body of Jesus in Abraham's day. By the time God got to Abraham's generation, he said, wait a minute, I need to test this blood. He said, Abraham, take your firstborn. Take him up on the hill. And when Abraham took him up, Isaac, up on the hill, and he raised a hand to take him, the angel of the Lord said, stop. Now God knows how much you love him. Now God knows that you're willing to give your only son. So notice that God needed that characteristic in the blood. So when Jesus jumped into his body, he had a genetic code that already said, I'm a willing sacrifice and God is willing to give his only son. Let me, let me help you. I don't know if somebody's with me. So now, somebody in your bloodline, you don't know that you are the culmination of generations of blessing and cursing. You're the culmination of generations of blessing and cursing. That's why in Deuteronomy it says what? I've placed before you blessing and cursing. Then it says what? Choose life. Let me help you. So God is saying, there's two things in your blood. There's blessing and cursing. And in each generation, your bloodline reserves the right to decide whether or not blessing will follow through or cursing will carry on. 
So God's looking for faith in your blood. I'm talking about your blood now. He's looking for faith in your bloodline. He's looking for someone with faith so that he can get a hold of the blessing in your blood and begin to bring the characteristics of righteousness out of your bloodline into the generation to follow. So then make a seed and plant you as a seed and bring forth a multiplied blessing for the generations to come. Amen. Amen. I said to our class, spirits don't make statements. They don't make statements they can't. They have no lips. They have no tongue to make a statement in this realm. That's why when I teach the message that demons, you think demons lie, they don't. It's a, it's a hard message to swallow because the revelation is spirits can't and don't make statements. Spirits can only make suggestions because you are the one that decides. You decide blessing or cursing. You decide life or death. So no spirit can make a statement. You are the one that makes the statement. The spirit gave you a suggestion. The Spirit's coming to give you a suggestion. Did you know God himself can't make a statement in this realm? The Bible says he said, let there be light. That was a spiritual word. Then he said, let us make men in our image. So who was going to carry out the light? Men was to carry out. What God stated in the spirit, man was to state in this realm. God himself can't make a statement in this realm. He authorized you to make a statement. Let me help you. <laughs> so uh, God's not going to make a statement over your life. Oh, he's not going to make a statement over your life in this realm. He's made a statement about you in spiritual places. You have to come into agreement with what he said about you. Come on. And it won't come forth until you make a statement about what God said about you. As far as this realm is concerned, God didn't say it. He didn't say it until you said it. <sighs> Somebody's not hearing me. He didn't say it until someone wearing flesh and bone said it. Amen. Amen. I hear somebody spirit. Demons don't lie. What you talking about? Does the Bible call Satan a liar? No. You the thief and you the liar. You missed it. You missed it. He made you the thief and you the liar. He's smarter than that. The Bible calls him the spirit of Lie. Spirit. Spirit. So you told the lie. You became the liar. Satan uses truths in the spirit of lies. He's a spirit. He comes in deception, shrouded in truth. That's why the Bible says it comes as an angel of what? Light. Oh. So while as you're looking for a liar... You missed Satan. <laughs> You're looking for a liar. You missed it. He comes in the form of truth. He comes to God and he says, let me tell you what Alicia did. Was it a lie? Oh, no, it's true. Let me tell you what Alicia did. She did this and this, God. She did this and that. Let me tell you what they did. Then he comes to Alicia and he says, Alicia, let me, look what you did. Oh, the devil is a lie. No, he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. You can't, what are you going to do then? See, we're looking to lean on our own righteousness. Oh, I, 
I did didn't I didn't do it. I did I did did the right thing. I did I did I did I did. When the only ground you really have to stand on, the only true foundation is Jesus did. Amen. So you missed him looking for the liar. Amen. So he uses truths. So he's trying to make a statement over your life that you come into agreement with it. He's trying to influence you, impress you. He's trying to cause that behavior to come through your bloodline. That it imprint on you, then it imprint on the babies. And the same generation of weakness carries on. That same iniquity, that same limitation carries on. He's, he's trying to get that in. Now God is trying to bring righteousness in Christ out of your life. Amen. Let's take a look at this scripture real quick. And we're going to transition here. Hallelujah. We're in Genesis chapter 5 here. And Alicia, could you read that for me? And um, go ahead. Genesis chapter 5. <clears throat> this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them. And blessed, blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived in 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. In the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. And all of the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos eight eight hundred and seven years. Okay, praise God. I want you to stop there. Now, okay. I'm going to jump up here because I want you to see this. Now, uh, real quick, Alicia, 4 verse 16. You said 4 through 16? Uh, chapter Genesis chapter 4, 4 verse 16. Verse And those okay. of my watching online, put Genesis chapter 4, 16, watching online. Put that in there for me. Um, Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mehujiel, and Mehujiel begat Methuselah, and Methuselah begat Lamech, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zila. Okay, you can stop there now. I want you to see something here because we were teaching this a little bit in a BSM class, but it's it goes right along with what. We're talking about the bloodline and genetics. I want you to see here, because this stood out to me when I was reading the scripture, when I said, Lord, wait a minute, there's something here. Why are all these names sounding the same? Enoch, Enosh, Methusel, and Methuselah. If you go name for name that came from Cain, name for name came from Seth. Just a very slight difference in the sound of the name. Why? Somebody say counterfeit. Cain carried the spirit of counterfeit in his blood. Amen. Somebody pray. You can play it. You can play me out. Mom de bebiosi pabarudes. Jesus. Mom de bebiosity. The Holy Spirit just took me. 
the Holy Spirit just took me into the Garden of Eden. And I saw something that shocked me. Can I talk to somebody? The Holy Spirit just took me to the Garden of Eden. I'm looking at this thing. I saw something that shocked me. But the Lord showed me that when Eve partook of the tree, she was divided. She was divided. She carried two personalities in her. One was still the remnant of the authentic, and the other was the counterfeit. So when she went and she had children, she gave birth to the counterfeit spirit, the curse, and she gave birth to the blessing, the authentic. Do you see that? Satan is trying to conceive something in you right now. That's why when you come to Jacob, God says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Do you see that division still existing? For God even said in Revelation that there will be a seed of the serpent. Somebody's not ready for me. The seed of the serpent will be at enmity. Will be at enmity with your seed. Wait a minute. So you mean when she partook of the tree, she was impregnated with Satan's seed. Huh? And she was pregnant spiritually that manifested in a counterfeit. And the counterfeit slew the authentic. Slew the authentic. Do you see that? There was a divide. Amen. And so you see two generations beginning in the earth. Two foundational generations. One, the Antichrist spirit. And the other, the spirit of Christ. And from that time, all the way till this one. The Bible says the Antichrist is already in the world. The spirit is already here. And from that day till this one, there's enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Do you see that? Counterfeit. So now when we look in Genesis chapter 5, we see Satan taking the bloodline of Cain and beginning to produce a seed, a counterfeit seed. And then God gave Eve another son in the spirit of Abel named Seth. And the Bible says that when Seth was born, it says here, that uh, 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 for God has appointed another seed instead of Abel. Do, do you see that? She said, I shall name him Seth. For God has appointed another, somebody say another seed, instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him was a son born, and he named him Enosh. Cain's son name was Enoch. Seth name was Enosh then men began to call on the name of the Lord do you see that then Seth had another son and if you follow the names name for name there was counterfeit and there was authentic now the counterfeit spirit because I want you to understand during this time and we're teaching this in our school of ministry those that want to connect get connected during this time there were great beings actually walking the earth spirits great spirits amen 
great spirits called watchers that were walking the earth and a number of them were illegal amen can I help someone let me help you somebody say everything happens in the spirit first in the spirit first when I first started out seeking after the Lord I had a vision and I actually painted this. I painted it a big, big four foot canvas. I painted this vision. And I, in the vision, the earth was there. And then there was, there was hell on the left and there, on the right, there was heaven. And I began to paint and the Lord began to show me and I saw beings. And I saw between the earth, heaven and hell, but then I saw beings I began to paint them and these beings had wings and I said but Lord are these people the Lord said no this is the beginning of the divide for it began in heaven do you see that it began in heaven and it was brought into the earth realm and so what spiritually divided in heavenly places began to manifest through Eve. It, do you see it? Do you see the split? It didn't even just start there. When the seed came into Eve, when she partook of the fruit, she got pregnant with Satan's seed in the spirit. Because Satan carried the division of heaven in him. And it manifested. Amen. Somebody pray. Now. Now we're in the earth realm. There's the angels of God. Then there are illegal spirits. If you continue to read, you'll find... A man named Jubal. He came from Cain's family line. Jubal. And he uh, was the first person to build instruments and make music. There was another man. Was the first person to build tents and start to erect buildings. Amen. So then you see real estate being given to Satan and you see music in the hands of the devil first. Now somebody say, prophet, that don't make no sense. Why did God allow that to happen? God didn't allow it. When Eve partook of the fruit of the tree, when Adam and Eve partook of that, they made a precedent in the realm of the spirit. And if you know anything about the realm of the spirit, when something is established, it's established. It can't be changed. That's why Jesus had to come. So she made a precedent in man. Adam and Eve made a precedent in man that men would forever choose knowledge over obedience over wisdom would always choose forbidden knowledge and any forbidden knowledge is in the spirit of compromise it's in the spirit of Satan so the first music this is why our music is so infiltrated with the devil now the first music was given to Jubal illegally by a spirit in Cain's bloodline. The first real estate was given to a man in Cain's bloodline by an illegal spirit that shared wisdom illegally outside of God's timing. Do you see that? 
Somebody say counterfeit. So the counterfeit always comes first. Let me help you. There's something Satan is trying to push you into that God already has reserved for you. There's something Satan is trying to push you into right now, prematurely, that God already has the plans for you to walk into. Just like he pushed Eve right into the tree. He pushed them, Adam and Eve, pushed them both right into the tree and said, you will, that, that God doesn't want you to partake because you'll be like him. But she didn't know he, they were already like him. Do you see that? Somebody said counterfeit. So uh, because of these principles, the counterfeit always comes first. Somebody pray. Let's stand up in the house. Let's pray. I thank you, Lord, that you're exposing counterfeit. Yes. You're exposing counterfeit for every divided place in a people, for every divided place, Lord. Mando re de Dios. Mando re de Dios. Rando de Dios.